Hi, uh, my name is Joanna from Andy's Florist. I wanted to first thank you so much for purchasing your flower class kit. I am one of two. My mom and I own Andy's Florist in Torrance. We've been in business for 25 years and we're excited to now take our classes online and we hope you enjoy. Uh, this is actually what we're going to be making. It's an elongated arrangement, lots of foliage, and a goblet style vase. We're going to be making our own and I'm going to go over everything that you're going to have in your kit. So, as part of your kit, you're going to be having a vase, some chicken wire, a butterfly and a card as well as a crystal, which I'll tell you what to do with that at the end, flower food, and your bucket full of blooms. You have the option, if you'd like to upgrade, to get some flower clippers. If not, some sharp scissors from home will work. So, let's get started. To begin, you're going to use your vase and your chicken wire. This is going to serve essentially as a net to hold all of your flowers. So what you want to do is you want to fold it long way and make it into, I like to call it like a little egg. And you want to try to bind everything in so that it will fit your base. Like there, we're still a little bit too big, so we can just crinkle it in. Now be careful, it is a little sharp. And then you can kind of just ram it in there a bit. And this is what's going to help hold all of your flowers in place. Make sure it's nice and snug and it doesn't move too much around. Next, you're going to grab your packet with your flower food and open it up and put it all in there. If you want to do this at some other time and you don't have flower food, you can actually just put a little bit of pitch. What the flower food does is that actually helps your flower maintain its cleanliness, which actually thus then has your flowers last longer. Then you're going to want to grab your water, pour it on there. <laughs> Don't make a mess like me. <sighs> and now let's get started. So you should have about, actually a little bit less than it's about three quarters of the way full of water because you are going to be adding in a lot of blooms. So let's get started. One of the type of greenery that you're going to have is going to be this elongated eucalyptus. This is what smells really, really good. Um, you're going to have this eucalyptus. You're also going to have silver dollar eucalyptus and pits. So I want to start off with my elongated eucalyptus to create a shape. Now what I like to do is I like to create it something of an S. Um, so I want to go kind of up here and then maybe finish up down here. Now this might change as you're making it, but have fun with it and just make sure that you're kind of measuring up where you're gonna put your greenery before cutting it and then place it in there. Let's see, this was a little bit too long. So I can put it in and kind of tangle it within your chicken wire. And so you shouldn't have any issues with it moving um, as you're doing your arrangement, but from the beginning, it's a little bit more empty. So you wanna really just jam it in there so that it stays in place. Doing that a little bit more. Just like something a little bit traumatic um, with a lot of shape to it. And what I'm essentially doing is creating a base to where my flowers are going to go. So, what I like about this eucalyptus is that it smells but it's also very bendy so if you kind of like i know that i want this to go down here and this is oops, i want it to go down here so i can bend it a little bit so that i still have a stem in the water and then have it go where i want it to go as you start putting more flowers in you'll be able to adjust and have things stay in a little bit tighter but even still from the beginning, the chicken wire really helps to keep everything in place. So next, I'm going to work with my silver dollar. Now you guys are going to get a lot of silver dollar in your packages. 
so in your flower class kits. So play with it if you have a little bit of leftover. I like to actually just grab a couple blooms and put them in little vases throughout the house and it's really pretty. So to put it in, what I've noticed is that these leaves kind of get in the way, the ones on the bottom. I want to focus on the ones up top. So, so that these don't get in the way in my chicken wire, I'm actually going to just clear them off, measure up where I want it to go, and I'm going to be covering up most of the rim of my vase with this silver dollar. Um, some of it though, if it's very stern, you can also help as a secondary greenery that adds into the shape of the outside eucalyptus that we started out with. So let's see there. And then just keep going with it. Add in as much greenery as you like. I, this arrangement that we're doing is a base of blocks of foliage. So I say put in as much as you can. I love this type of eucalyptus. It smells really good. And it has such a pretty delicate texture that it's not going to be overbearing. You're still going to appreciate the flowers that we're going to be putting in um, later. But just keep going. Go all the way around. Okay, so I'm going to be turning this around. So this arrangement is going to be one that I would put up against a wall somewhere at home as a little accent decor. We're going to have the, the flowers focus a little bit more towards the front um, just to really get a grasp on the design that we're making. And I like to leave my greenery. I mean, I'm going to put it over to the side once we start doing the flowers, but um, I like to use a lot of greenery for this design, so we might add in some more greenery afterwards, even as we're putting in the arrangement, as we're putting in the flowers, to fill in little holes and go from there. so that the stem goes about midway through the base and it's going to be held tightly with the chicken wire. There, that's nice. Okay. So here's what I have so far. Keep going around and putting in more foliage throughout your arrangement, especially to cover up your mechanics. Rule number one in floral design is always cover up your mechanics and you don't want to see um, the chicken wire anywhere coming out through your base uh, and just have fun with it I mean I'm cleaning up clipping and placing and it's So now the last green that you have, because obviously you're going to notice that this eucalyptus, it is very thin and delicate. So what, you're, what we're going to do to help us also covering up the mechanics is going to be, oh, this one's too long, is going to be using your pits. So that's the third type of greenery that we have. That's this one right here. So for this one, there's interesting ways to cut it. You can either cut down all the greenery and just use a top, or if you're like, you know what, this looks really nice too, you can cut it and now you have two pieces to work with. One obviously a little longer and a little shorter, and you always want your stem to be reaching in water. So here, I would put this closer to the base of my base to hide my mechanics, whereas I could use this longer one to help me with the dimension and shape that I'm going for. And yeah, just keep going all the way around, creating a nice thick base of foliage with dimension. And have fun with it. Too long. You're gonna notice 
this, this chicken wire is really nice and, and sturdy. If for some reason it moves around in your base, just make sure that you're kind of holding it in place while placing in your foliage. side down on the other just something not like you're dancing um, you can also go all the way up all the way down I wouldn't do too much drapery just because yes these are flexible but not too much for that you'd use more like a draping amaranthus but this is more something to have texture foliage and then lots of blooms that are just very rich so I'm gonna leave this here I do have some extra greens I'm going to just put this to the side, and in case there's something else that I want to fill in some little holes, I'll be able to go back to this greenery and work with it afterwards. Um, okay, so we let me recap what kind of flowers we're going to be working with. You're going to have calla lilies, spray roses, full-size roses, and bunny tails. So you're going to notice that these are actually a different color from our original sample. Um, we're going to be going and providing whatever is in season, or if you have a preference, let us know and we can accommodate any different color palette. We recommend never using more than three colors for any arrangement. So in the original sample, we were using peach yellow with the burgundy. Here we're doing orange white with the burgundy. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to start off with some of your roses. Now, um, this is something that I have already kept in some other classes where you're able to reflex your roses if you'd like, and you do this by putting your thumb in the middle of the petal using your two index fingers, your index finger and your middle finger inside the petal, folding it out, and essentially creating a bigger rose out of that same rose you have. looking like that compared to like that. If you don't like that look, you could also just open them naturally by going like this a little bit, or even blowing it in, blowing a little bit into the rose, but because of COVID, we're not gonna use that, do that too much right now. So you can just do that, and that kind of like loosens up your petals to really just make it nice and rich. So what I'm gonna do is I want to have the middle of my roses are gonna sit a little shorter and then we're gonna have some sprouting out. But to help you with the shape of your arrangement, you're also gonna have these calla lilies that are gonna be able to sprout out here. You're gonna have spray roses that will help you filling in and making it very nice and rich. You're gonna have your focal main rose throughout and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you don't put it all at the same level. It adds in a lot of dimension when you put in one rose in, one rose out. Putting them at different levels creates a lot of dimension in your arrangement and makes it really pretty. So let's get started. So for example, if I place one there, I'm gonna to wanna to place the other one a little bit further out adding in that dimension, and I wanna keep doing this throughout the whole arrangement with almost every flower that I use. Um, we're gonna be doing just a little bit of color blocking, not too much. Uh, color blocking is when you're putting in lots of the same colors in the same area. Kinda of like if you're looking at a rose bush, you have this pink rose bush and this white rose bush, and all the roses kind of grow at different angles, so it makes it a little bit more natural, like what an actual flower, an actual bush would look like in nature. There. So here you see how I'm like, I'm getting my roses in and out and still growing from them. Do this one a little bit now. 
You're gonna notice now your flowers should be staying in place quite easily because it's definitely more packed in there. Plus the chicken wire really helps. So if you want it there, it should be staying there. And see, like, I see a few little holes. Like, I can see my mechanics here. Towards the end, I'm going to start putting in a little bit more of this extra greenery that I have to cover up those holes. Just anything too to really get through the chicken wire. I recommend twisting your flower to make it easy to get out. So now we have a base that has different dimensions, lots of different levels, and it's grown our arrangement. So even though it's very rich right here, you definitely appreciate the flowers throughout the whole circumference. So yeah, let's clean this up a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to work with my calla lilies. The calla lilies, the, the main reason for the calla lilies is because since they're a stock, you can use these to, again, elongate your arrangement, which is what we were doing from the beginning. So let's do that now. And these actually sometimes are cut with at-home scissors just because the, um, the stem is so soft compared to of rose. So what I like to do is I like to hold with one hand where I want the bloom to be and use the other hand to help me insert the flower. Make sure that it is in water. Again, be very careful with these calories because the stems are very fragile. So you don't want them to break in the chicken wire. So if you notice that they got a little damage, just take it out, give it an extra little cut, and then place it again. You're going to notice that I have little holes here, and it's because I know that I still have my spray roses coming. So you're actually also creating little holes, which are little placeholders for where your other blooms are going to go. And again, with the candle lilies, it can be a little tricky. So hold with one hand where you want it to go, and with the other hand, help it get in between the chicken wire. So this is where we're at so far. So I'm having every flower that we're using help me with that elongated design while still making it nice and rich in the middle and appreciating the foliage that we started out with. So next I'm going to go with these really pretty spray roses and remember the holes that we were creating that's where I want to fill in with my spray.
skin, same thing. You want to keep the the dancing thing going on, the, the elongated design as well as the different dimensions. And the spray roses as well, in and out, in and out. you may want to do. So again, if you need to take anything out, you can just twist it. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go back to my greenery now and fill in any spots where I either see my mechanics or where I see too much stem. I don't like to see too many of the stems. I like to just focus on the bulb of the flower. That's really just like the heart of it. So I want to just go around and again, hide any mechanics and hide any stems. Um, just because I'm not a huge fan of seeing stems exposed. You can just grab your stem. Like here, I can't do much with this. I can do a lot with this though. So I'm gonna grab it and just kind of clean it off the bottom, make a little slit and then insert it and then use this pretty part to show in your arrangement. I still have some salt smaller salt. I like it because it's very whimsical. So I'm gonna Use this to then help me with that shape that I was looking for. Just have a few little stems left, but these little bits, they're, they're great. I mean, there's little bits of accent that just really help make your arrangement. And it smells awesome, so. sprinkle them in. These are very fragile, uh, very thin, so be very careful when you're inserting them that they don't break um, because of your chicken wire. So I'm going to go and same thing, kind of like the cow lily, you can use one hand where you want it to be and then the other hand to help it get inserted. So let me keep going and I'll show you what this looks like. Okay. There. 
And these actually don't need any water. So as long as you place it within your chicken wire, it doesn't move around. The water source is not important at all for these bunny tails. Everything else, yes, though. You want to make sure that everything else has access to water. But the bunny tails live on their own, so. And these are great. These, as long as, um, once your arrangement has lived its life, um, if you can salvage these bunny tails, salvage them. You, can, you probably just need to cut off the bottom part of the stem. If it gets a little too wet, um, cut the cut the wet part off, and then you can use them in another arrangement. So this one is really jam packed. So I'm gonna hold it with one hand and help it insert with the other. Okay. There we go. So. If you have purchased flowers from us before, you know that all of our arrangements come with a little butterfly, a greeting card, and a little uh, diamond. So first I'm going to put in this little stud, this little crystal. This, if you didn't know, is actually a thank you for choosing to shop small. It's just our, our thank you, our way of saying thank you. So I just did it and punctured one of the roses. You want to make sure you puncture it in the, one of the roses. Um, not the calla lily unless you, not the calla lily because you need the backing to it or else it'll flop out. Whereas if you have um, a rose that has many different levels, it'll really stay in place. Um, and then your butterfly, if you want to put a cute little quote or you don't even need to use the card if you don't need it, or you can just put something nice and there you go. All right, so here is another angle of the arrangement that we just created. Here's the goblet, the bunny tails, the roses, the calla lilies, the stud, the butterfly with our card, all the pretty foliage. There you go. So there it is. I hope you enjoyed this class. Um, take a picture and tag us. We're at Andy's Florist. We'd love to see how your design came out. If you have any suggestions on other things you want to learn, other styles you want to learn, let us know. And I'm really excited to keep this going. We've had a really positive feedback on our social channels and we can't wait to keep going. So happy fall and enjoy.